Hi everyone, my name is James. I'm a product manager at Elastic and I focus on everything we're doing with generative AI and machine learning within Elastic Security. Today, I'm really happy to be able to share some of the latest additions that we've made to the Elastic AI Assistant. Hopefully you've been following our journey since we first introduced the Assistant within Elastic Security uh, and we've added some really exciting stuff now. So uh, the primary addition that we've made is that the Assistant is now uh, by default fully aware of all your open and acknowledged alerts that occurred within the last 24 hours. Uh, which means, if you've seen perhaps any of my previous workflows, you no longer necessarily have to start with a singular alert within the uh, assistant chat to start using it. Um, you can actually just ask it open-ended questions about any of your alerts that you'd like, or all of them, perhaps. Uh, I'm gonna start with a bit of a workflow with what existed today and um, just sort of show you how that can continue where, uh, continue on with some of the latest additions, but also some other things that you can do now which previously weren't possible. So let's say within Elastic Security, um, you know, I have this set of alerts today, pretty slow morning, uh, 16 alerts, uh, and I'm currently investigating this local scheduled task creation alert. Uh, I am going to use the assistant to kick me off here. So I'm uh, loading up the alert inside of the chat as we've uh, been accustomed to. Uh, I'm going to keep everything default. So uh, all of the alert context, the same prompt, uh, and, and hopefully you're familiar with this workflow if you've been using the assistant, but essentially the default prompt or question is going to ask the assistant for, listen, just summarize this alert for me. Tell me what I should be doing to investigate it. Just point out uh, anything of relevance that I should know and um, uh, what features of Elastic Security can help me if I need to go do further. So here we go, it's saying, listen, um, uh, this event represents the detection of a scheduled task being created on this host by this user. Uh, the process was used was scheduled tasks, uh, and its, ar its arguments indicate a new scheduled task with a one minute frequency to execute a VB script uh, of this file within this directory. Um, this typically indicates persistence, so a lot of really rich information already, right? This, this workflow, uh, is what we've had. The assistant is so good at this, but we can do more now. So, you know, it's highlighted that, you know, this user James Spiteri did this. Well, what else did James do? We have 16 alerts. Did James, is James involved in any of them? Any other of them? It's just, it's just the one off. Let's ask the assistant instead of me having to spend the time to figure it out manually. Um, so let's just ask using my open alerts as context, what else did James Spiteri do? So this is now a really powerful addition, where because before uh, we couldn't really do this. I, I would have had to, you know, selectively look at my alerts, put them into the assistant, ask questions about them. It wasn't aware of all of them by default. Uh, we, by the way, I keep saying all of them. We do give you an option to select like if you wanted to summarize the alerts um, in case uh, you don't want to have to worry about like context window size and stuff like that. So there is all of this flexibility within the assistant. Um, but look what it's told me now. Look how cool this is. So it said, listen, uh, based on the information from your open alerts, James was involved within multiple suspicious activities. So, you know, there was this executable which was ran, which caused the ransomware alert. Um, there was this PowerShell script which ran, which we know it's probably re also related to the above because of um, the paths in use here. Um, creation of suspicious files, mul multiple instances of network activity around WinWord and OneDrive. Uh, so even with one question now, typically something I would have to go investigate manually or run queries for, I asked in natural language and the assistant gave me the answer. One thing, typically a follow-up question that's very normal to have is um, what hosts did all of the above happen on? You know, typically as we're investigating, we'd want to know, okay, we've identified James did a little bad today. Did it happen on one system? Was it like a system compromised? Was it uh, an account compromised? Was were James's credentials used on any other machines to do even further bad? So just being able to ask the natural language question where I would typically have to go and run a query for. And Look what it's said, no, actually, um, or I should say, it, James's activity is spread across two hosts in this case. 
so on this particular host, we had this local scheduled task creation event, the suspicious PowerShell activities, and also script file creations. And on this one, we had a ransomware event. So if we wanted to, we could, we could decide to pivot. We could say, um, let's say, for example, the ransomware event is of interest to me. Interest to me. Please use all the open alerts to give me as much context of the ransom. I should say on the ransomware activity as possible, which is really cool. So now just being able to have that open-ended conversation in one place without leaving the assistant, I still could, of course, but uh, just that ability now just to have a fully fledged conversation with your alerts is really, really powerful. So yeah, we can see, okay, it gave me some additional information. I could ask it to like generate queries for me to look for even more, so on and so forth. But we now know at least just from that initial question set that um, you know James is doing several bits of bad on multiple machines. Uh, so I wanted to give you a bit of context about how you could start to use this even with the existing workflow. But you could decide not to start from an alert at all. You could say, let's let's clear out this conversation. And now let's just ask it about all my alerts. All right, why don't why not? So I have a very specific prompt here where I've asked it to say, look at everything and see what you can initialize su initially summarize for me. Uh, do you spot any progressions? Are any of the alerts related? Are they all one off? Uh, I've decided to, to just <clears throat> start off my entire workflow from the assistant in this case. And uh, hopefully you can see like the power of this because these models have a really like a good ability to reason with uh, these type of alerts. Uh, obviously, they're not 100% perfect. I would never say that, but they give us a really, 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 really good place to start. And they're able to really reason out what might have happened because of all the information within these alerts. So um, basically, look, it's identified um, two main attack progressions of note within my environment, right? So it said, listen, there is um, a critical malware detection alert, which was um, observed involving a suspicious file named important.exe on a user's desktop. Uh, it also demonstrated activity consistent with ransomware. We've already known that from the previous chat, which could have, of course, severe implications. Um, it also said there is unusual network activity which was observed originating from Winward, indicating a potential phishing attack with a macro-enabled document. The attack progression involved PowerShell obfuscation spawned via Microsoft Office and the execution of suspicious PowerShell scripts, with, which this could indicate a targeted spear phishing attack. Look what an incredible starting point this is. Uh, we now know that there's these two immediate things going on. It looked at all these different alerts and identified that there's actually a progression between two sets of them because these things seem to be happening on different hosts. In fact, from our previous chat, we know that, but uh, it's done some really good initial work for me up front just because it's aware of all my alerts. Uh, of course, we can ask it to elaborate further, right? So for example, um, could you give me more information on the uh, second progression, right? So uh, we're not going to stop there. Obviously, we now have to uh, fully investigate further. We could, uh, we're using the assistant to help us or otherwise, but at least we have a really good starting point. We've bubbled down those 16 alerts or so into two immediate actions, two individual progressions, which we know. Um, gave us a bit more information here. It said it's happening on this host now. Um, it was detected throughout this time and so on and so forth. So then I could pivot more into the host. I could get more information about this type of attack. I could ask it questions like uh, the ability to generate queries so I could get all the information about this host. But hopefully uh, with the introduction uh, of this concept of being knowledgeable about your data, even more so than it was before, you start to see even even more value from the assistant than you might have originally uh, seen. So just to summarize, uh, the assistant is now fully aware of all your open and acknowledged alerts for the last 24 hours. You could um, you know, have it as part of any workflow you'd like, whether that's to the existing workflow that there was or perhaps starting from nothing and just asking it to analyze everything. Uh, you can. The nice thing is 
you have the freedom to use it if, if you want to. You could decide to use everything we give you out of the box. That is your choice. Uh, we do give you some flexibility in terms of what alerts are included and not. Uh, perhaps uh, you are using uh, a model with a lower context window. So we do give you the flexibility to say, listen, you know what? Um, look at the top 100 alerts or you can drop that down. The choice is yours. You can, if you wanted to decide to turn this feature off all entirely, I wouldn't recommend it because it is at such tremendous value. Uh, I'll leave you with a bit of a teaser uh, because I don't have much more time today, but imagine a world where you get this sort of insight without having to use the assistant. I'm not going to say too much more, but uh, there's a lot more to be excited about in upcoming releases, but hopefully this does get uh, your appetites wet to start to use the assistant even more within your workflows. So that's all I had for you today. Um, if you haven't tried the assistant yet, I really do encourage it. We support um, um, several different large language models, whether you're using uh, OpenAI or Azure's OpenAI service or Amazon's Bedrock, or perhaps you're hosting your own uh, large language model locally, something like a, a mixed trial model, all fine. That's totally your choice. And in the future, we'll even add more. And remember, this is all available to try within a trial within an Elastic Cloud. <laughs> Excuse me, Elastic Cloud. Uh, thank you again. I hope you enjoyed this release and uh, stay safe.